Hello and welcome to Rick's Kits. Just bringing you something back to the community. I've been modelling, I don't know, probably since I was about 10, 11 years old, maybe even earlier than that. Um, as you can see, I'm building a 20mm flat 38 mitt sonder hanger, 51. I've built the, the flak already. The story with this goes is this was going to be the second video of a three part but I seem to have trouble with the first video. It was filmed over a week ago and I wanted to put it through a editor but the editor wouldn't take the file. So I chose to download a second free editing suite and edited it up. Everything seemed to work okay until I got to the actual uh, viewing of the video itself. And what occurred was this editing suite because it was free it left a watermark across the entire project from left to right so you couldn't really see what I'd made to be honest with you so to get around that I downloaded the third editing suite and everything went fine. I uh, edited, put all the music in, took out what I needed to take out. Um, and the crux of that one is when I exported the file. It didn't export very well. It took over an hour to export. And the consequences of that video editing was it was glitchy it looked as if I don't know if you can probably think back to a few years ago with the old internet when you used to um, first watch TV on you know streaming you you know, have glitchy bits all over the place the music wasn't playing very well it was just a mess so what was part one the actual flat piece itself unfortunately I can't do anything with that file so part two is now part one with a pre-built flat basically which is not how I wanted my first video to go up on YouTube. So this video is going to be the trailer. And the third video, which we're now going to be the second video, is going to be painting of both these sections. So bear with me, thank you for watching, and at the end of this, if you like what you see, I'm glad, leave a comment, if you don't like it, then don't tune in to the next one, that's all I say, and thank you for watching. So here we go with the flak. 38 mitt solder and a hanger 51 kit made by Tamiya this kit is quite an old kit made in 1978 and uh, I think originally it was uh, came out with either the Hawch type 1A which we see at the top 
with the flat mounted in the back which seems a bit weird um, and it may have come out with the crib truck but it was definitely a dual kit um, this I can tell from the uh, sprue lettering because the sprue lettering on this one is a K uh, obviously if it was a single standalone kit it would have an A or a B on it um, we have three deco options for this kit you've got the grey at the top with Luftwaffe decals um, so you've got plain, plain shot down decal I'm assuming that's what that is and with the kill markings um, well, on the second version you have the desert yellow which is the Africa core and the final one you have to excuse me sorry and the final one is the whitewash for snow camouflage potentially or primarily used on the Russian front and uh, as you can see here you've got a 251.17 and my intention my original intention was I have got an AFV kit 251.17 which is the, um, the radio version and the intention was to mount this kit in the back of the AFV club to make it a 251.17 full stop but I thought you know I'm starting starting my own channel might be easier just to go mildly easy and do this as a standalone build I don't have any figures for it so I'm not too particularly worried about that um, but yeah it's a nice kit still very crisp for its age like I said it was 1978 it was manufactured um, I think this kit is a made in Philippines for the American market uh, still very crisp got mould lines they're all over it so there's a lot of scraping needs to be done to bring it to to bring it to where it should be got injector pin marks showing up on a lot of the places in wheel arches on the magazine cages which sit on the inside of the uh, trailer and down near the tow hook but they're in places that are not really going to be seen when the when the kits put together um, so I'm, I'm not really going to do a lot about those I shall leave them as they are and so let's crack on shall we cut off this first piece of the main trailer I do like 10 meter kits they go, they go together pretty well like uh, was it the saying is if you throw the glue in in the box give it a shake and what you come out with a reasonably good kit obviously you have to do more than that <laughs> call off sanding to do on these older kits the newer kits are really really nice I do like some of the newer kits
Um, just so you're aware, even though this is a piece of armour, or classed as a, a, as a piece of armour, in my eyes, I don't just make armour. I'm prone to building uh, aircraft when I get bored of armour. Uh, and when I get bored of aircraft, I build ships. When I get bored of ships, I build cars. When I get bored of cars, build trucks. When I build trucks, etc., etc., I do figures. So I suppose what you could say is I'm I'm a jack of trouble, well, jack of all trades, and master of none. I think is is the phrase. Yeah, I, I build what takes takes my fancy at the time have been prone to you know buy a kit start building it see see something else that I like buy that get it delivered stop what I'm doing start that one um, so you know I then end up with uh, loads of unfinished kits all over the place I think my in my current stash I might have oh blimey between fifteen and twenty unfinished kits that I've that I've started because of being impatient. <coughs> yeah, that's a full term one. A little bit impatient, wanna get it done, wanna get it built, wanna get it painted. I suppose we all have that sometimes. Anyway, we need to uh, get all these seam lines off. I'm using a Swan Morton knife with a 10A blade. And I do occasionally use one of these cheap and nasty snap-off blade versions as well for scraping away. But normally, the, normally with a Swan Morton. And, and they do say you shouldn't cut towards you. I do it all the time. I have had a few accidents. I've cut my fingers, sliced my thumbs. But I'm comfortable doing it that way. You shouldn't really do it that way. You should do it away from yourself. Less injuries, less blood. And this mess. So, so you don't have to sit and watch me for about 20 minutes scrape into my heart's content I'll um I'll fast forward this part and get back to you when I finish scraping all the bits off and am ready to uh, glue this trailer together see you in a bit
Okay, welcome back. We are ready to start putting this trailer together. Um, I'm going to use Tamiya's uh, extra thin cement. That's my choice of go to cement. Um, I also use uh, Zappa Cap super glue and I use the Revel contactor for for larger bits that need to be glued. Um, when it comes round to painting and and decals and stuff, I have a varied selection of paints. Um, I'll go to Tamiya. Got loads of Tamiya paints. Uh, I'll use Mig. I'll use Vallejo. Um, I'll use Vallejo model colour. I'll use Army Painter. I'll use Citadel. So I'm not particularly fussed on the paint ranges that I use. Uh, as decal wise, in, when I come around to put in the deck, I always seem to have trouble with decals. I always end up with silvering. And that might just be from where I airbrush. Um, but I've been trying to use the Microsoft or Microset. I don't have much luck with that. So I've bought some Mr. Neo Mark. Um, set and softener. I give those a go and see how they come, they come out for me. Uh, all my all my paints are acrylic. I don't don't use water for thinning. Um, I use the X twenty A. Or the Vallejo airbrush thinner. If I want to thin down my model colour range, I will use the acrylic resin thinner medium and add a little bit of airbrush flow improver. Uh, they're both Vallejo products. I seem to get okay results with those. Uh, when it comes to airbrushing Citadel, I use the thinner medium and I do add a small drop of water, but only a small drop of water because they're very plasticky. It's a very plasticky base paint. I know they do an airbrush range, but I had a go at that a few years ago when that, when that first came out. And I wasn't impressed. It clogged my airbrush up something awful. And it was supposed to be able to spray it straight out of the straight out of the pot. That isn't the case. Or wasn't the case at the time. It took me a good couple of hours to clean out a very ex well, to me is a very expensive airbrush. Which was my uh Hodron Hodron Steinbeck. <clears throat> evolution and I wasn't impressed I really wasn't impressed yes I'll get clogs every now and again using the MIG stuff and the Vallejo stuff um, but that's I think that's down to laziness on cleaning more than anything um, one other thing that I do use every now and again is the enamel based washes from AK um, just to add you know, light rust and rust streaks and streaking grime as you do um, I use MIG pigments 
Um, I do use some of their mud as well. But I try not to buy, if I can help it too much, any of all those extra add-ons because it just makes a kit, in my eyes, it makes it, it makes it so expensive. You know, you're paying four or five pound for something you could probably make up out of uh, a bit of plaster of Paris and some dried pigments. Yeah. I, I, and this is me personally, I don't, you know, I don't see the point in buying loads and loads of extras and add-ons. But I do use them for what I've already got. That's a little bit of what I use, and uh, so I'm going out of shot with the video slightly. Yeah, everyone's got their own preferences. Those are mine. I'm. I'll just be happy if you if you watch the video. Go along. But yeah. Okay, get these wheels to. I'm not going to glue these wheels on, I'm just going to leave them as they are. Um, but that is the trailer finished. The next step after this will be to paint, paint the trailer up. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Um, this is my first, first video, so little bit nervous um, yeah I just want to put my model making out there I'm not going to be as brilliant as as some of the you know your Andy hobby headquarters of the world and your plasmos of the world they make fantastic kits I do like what they do I am subscribed to them along with other things um, It's a good hobby, 
I enjoy it. And there's plenty more people out there like me that enjoy it. So if you do like what you've just seen, um, leave a comment, leave a like, and uh, I'll get back to you with the next video, which will be painting of this delightful kit from Tamiya. Thank you for watching.